Do you have a category in your budget called vacation? If you do, I have one question. Why? Not why do you have that category? That's awesome. Treat yourself. But why does it have such a boring name? Do you have a category for your next car? If you do, is it called the Your Last Name Mobile? And if not, again, I ask, why? My name is Ben, and that's actually what we're talking about today. Names. We love naming things. Boats, animals, natural disasters, you name it. And we do. We, we, we literally do name it. But it turns out that naming a thing actually changes the way you perceive that thing. Researchers gave undergrad students stress balls to carry with them for a few weeks. Half of those students were also prompted to give the stress ball a name, like Mr. Squeezed or Stressica Alba. After a few weeks, the researchers asked the participants how much money someone would have to offer them for them to agree to sell that stress ball. People who didn't name their stress balls would have parted with it for about $2.50. But people who named theirs something like Billy Squish or Stressy McCartney those people wouldn't part with it for any less than $4.07 on average. Giving something a name causes us to value it differently. And that is real juicy when you're talking about your financial well-being. If you know the four rules of the YNAB method, then you know about giving every dollar a job. You decide what every dollar is going to do before you actually spend it. We tend to emphasize how this gives you clarity. You know exactly what you can afford and how your spending is impacting your plan. That's all great, but the stormtroopers in Star Wars all had jobs and I watched those suckers get blown to bits time and time again without shedding a dog on tear. Then Star Wars episode seven comes along and one of them takes off their helmet and is like, hi, I'm Finn. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I care about this stormtrooper so much. I hope he literally never dies until Rise of Skywalker. But that's a, that's a, that's a video for a very different channel. The power of rule one is that you don't just employ every dollar, you also name every dollar. If you hand me 20 bucks and say, this is your fun money, then suddenly I have a lot of feelings about that $20. Now in reality, it's no different than any other $20 bill. It doesn't say e pluribus unum benum funum munum, but in my mind, now this is my fun money. And that changes my attitude about and my behavior with that money. What does every stuffy, cynical movie character say when the, the childlike, free-spirited character adopts a wild animal? Don't name it or you'll get attached. Exactly. When you name those wild dollars, you get attached. And that actually helps you make better decisions. How? Well, a lot of people are attracted to the four rules because of rule three. Change your budget when you change your mind. It's liberating. It's empowering. Empowering? It's empowering. YNAB, it's empowering. And it's frankly more realistic than a lot of other budgeting philosophies. But the deep magic of rule three, the secret sauce, rests in rule one. When every dollar has a specific job, a specific name attached to it, rule three isn't just being flexible. It's this mindful practice for aligning your money with your values and priorities. You're not just spending an extra $20. You're spending your dining out dollars or your phone upgrade dollars. What could be an abstract exercise in numbers suddenly becomes a reflection on what you care about and in what order. A lot of personal finance people bemoan the fact that we all use plastic or digital payments now because that takes away the pain of purchasing. When we all use cash, you'd feel that little wince as the cashier took the dollars out of your hand. Naming your dollars is kind of like that. But it's not so much about creating pain when you spend, it's about creating tension. When you spend, you feel how that purchase tugs on your other priorities. And that gives you a greater mindfulness about your money. And believe it or not, there's actually a better way to name your dollars. In another study by those same researchers, they presented some undergrad students with a coffee mug. Some were told the coffee mug's name was Muggy, while others were told its name was Greg. And they found that students were much more willing to part with Greg's than with Muggies. Sorry, Greg. The name that was more creative and more fitting for the object created a greater sense of value in the mind of the students. So, if you want to bump up your intentionality around a specific category in your budget, try giving it a creative and fitting name. Are you going to feel more satisfaction paying down student loan number three or Darth Alma Mater? Are you going to be more eager to protect vacation or sun, sand, and sightseeing? Or what if you named a category after the feeling it gives you? What if home repairs was called warm, safe, and happy? What if car repairs was called 
Calm in Crisis. I asked my coworkers about some unique category names they have, and I got some awesome answers. One person renamed their emergency fund, No Touchy, because they found themselves pulling from it too often for non-emergencies. Another had a category called Awesome People Who Have Dared to Pursue a Creative Career that she dips into anytime she supports any kind of artist. And one of my coworkers has a Christmas magic category alongside their Christmas gifts category. It's specifically for adding a little extra fun money into a month that tends to be dark and dreary in their area. You can name these things whatever you want. What, are, are the budget police gonna come to your house and arrest you? No, they're a horribly inefficient organization. They haven't gotten anyone in years. So take a look at your budget. What categories could use the old band name treatment? And if you've already got some great names for categories, tell us what they are. And if you see a good one, steal it. You're allowed to do that. Again, I cannot, I cannot emphasize how bad the budget police are at their job. Thank you.